So, while I really went off on Eleanor and the goofiness surrounding her, she's arguably not the most bafflingly confusing thing in the Fazbear Fright series. That goes to Faz Goo and the obsession with, uh, jelly goo people. Now, what I'm about to tell you may be shocking, but Faz Goo is the most consistent villain in the Fazbear Fright series. I am not kidding. To put it in perspective, Foxy only features in one story with a few references here and there. The puppet only features in one story. Two if you count that lone epilogue cameo. Ballora has two headlining roles and a few appearances here and there. Fazgu is the primary villain of a Fazbear Fright story on three different accounts. Four if you count the extremely similar sea bonnies that is just a different kind of Fazgu. So what is Fazgu? Fazgu is slime that Fazbear Entertainment created. It has very little connection to anything FNAF, and it's really just a holdover from Goosebumps. Or perhaps like a write-in to sell FNAF slime toys. Unlike Bendy, that could probably get away with slime ink-related stuff, Fazgoo is always jarring and never feels like it takes place in the same universe. It's actually kind of funny when you think about it. It's a product created by a company for no discernible reason that creates more harm than good. See... Fazbear Entertainment has always been this odd sort of entity. In the games, it is this uh, larger-than-life company who is frequently negligent and always covering its backside. They cut corners, and they care very little about lives over profit, especially the lives of their employees and their customers, etc. In the Fazbear Frights books, Fazbear Entertainment knowingly releases products specifically to replace children with clones for no discernible reason. The, uh, the Fazbear Entertainment of the books is more of a supervillain organization. In the games, it's all about profit. In the books, it doesn't really make much sense at all. They also have, like, a complete monopoly over pretty much everything, like... They have control of schools, they have control of different restaurants, and nowhere is that more apparent than the first story featuring Fazku called He Told Me Everything. Basically, this kid is in a science class when they're donated Fazku. After staying late, the Fazku copies his DNA while he, he melts away and he tells the clone all about himself so it will be able to replicate him perfectly to spare his suffering family. The next day, it is implied that the teacher was in on the whole thing, and the clone tells him that the kid told him everything. It's a non-story. A non-FNAF, nonsensical, empty filler just to fill the book gap. And that's pretty much just what Fasku is. Why introduce some of the numerous animatronics and concepts that have only been vaguely referenced in the games when you can have a pointless story with Faz slapped on to fill the quota? It's silly. No, worse, it's downright uninspired. And the next example of Fazgu is just downright stupid. In the story The Puppet Carver, which has, note, absolutely nothing to do with the puppet, a man runs a failing restaurant when one of his workers introduces a machine that can build animatronic dolls for the franchise. The man is a jerk who is mean to everyone, you know the trope, but he has a change of heart near the end before he's killed. You're probably wondering where Fazgu gets involved. Is he ground up in the machine and becomes Fazgu, revealing the truth of what this substance is? No. Does the machine run off of Fazgu? No. It's, it's much worse. Like, at the end of the story, they suddenly remember they're supposed to be a villain, and the Fazgu monster walks in and to like switch his body, implies to switch bodies with him, and then the book just kind of ends. You set up a machine that builds robots, and instead of taking advantage of the absolute horror of workplace accidents with heavy machinery, you just bring in the blob. And not that blob, this blob. I don't know if this was like an, uh, twist, an attempt at a twist, or if it was just lazy, because the story itself is very formulaic. It's, again, more the basic premise, and then it just has this slapped at the end. The next story would be Tales of the Pizzaplex's Under Construction. 
an Inception-like story where a young woman visits the Pizzaplex, tries a VR machine, and then once she returns home, she watches everyone around her either die from cancer or turn into jelly people. So this technically doesn't involve Fazgu, but it's pretty much the same, yes, this is a story about a bunch of people dying from cancer. But maybe it's a VR hallucination. Oof. That's, that's one kind of a plot point, but something about it feels like just a little insensitive and pretty tactless, making widespread cancer what turns people into jelly monsters. That's real tacky. It's like they were trying to do a, a sort of Junji Ito-inspired story, but had absolutely no nuance and no creativity. Okay, back on topic. The last story is arguably C. Bonnie's. It's supposed to be something else, but it's pretty much, you'll see, it's pretty much Fazgu. Basically, a boy gets sea bonnies as a pet. They whisper and from his fish tank and tell him to do stuff and badmouth him. And he hallucinates and then he drinks a bunch of them because they were hanging out in a glass in his bathroom. And then he's running around outside and he turns into jelly. That's it. There's also a hilarious bit of trivia I found on Wikipedia. Unlike the other stories, I had not read Sea Bonnies after I saw like bits of it when it had first leaked. I wasn't interested, so I didn't read it. So I went to du double check the plot, and I found this comment. The Five Nights at Freddy's Ultimate Guide states, Fritz, Rory's goldfish, is named Fritz which matches one of the names of the missing children seen on a tombstone of the secret ending of Pizzeria Simulator and the Fourth Closet novel. They seem unrelated. They seem unrelated? Yeah, I would say so. One is a fish, one is a tombstone, and one is the possible name of a worker at Freddy's. This is the series that has introduced three Jessicas, three Michaels, two confirmed Will Bills, there's even a story where the protagonist was named Andrew and after recognizing that this was the same name as a character in the epilogues was then changed to another name. I don't think these people are connected. Why can't you get more names? I get it. Fazbear Frights is likely written by underpaid ghostwriters who don't have the ability to check notes. But can't someone check this? Also, little note here, but... Is that really the secret ending of Pizzeria Simulator? I think that's the actual ending of Pizzeria Simulator. The true ending of Pizzeria Simulator. I went off on a tangent. The important part is, look, this is another case where the theming here is recycled directly from Goosebumps. This weird obsession with goo and jelly and stuff, what does this have to do with haunted objects or animatronics or even sci-fi since... That's the direction FNAF has been leaning into recently. I mean, as it is now, FNAF, as of the game series, is so far in the future that they can't go back to a normal Chuck E. Cheese unless they either reset or go back in the timeline. But nowhere do these stories seem appropriate. C could you have done anything else? Well, yeah, okay, let's see. How about instead of sea bonnies, he gets a little animatronic for his fish tank, like an animatronic octopus that maybe kills his fish and then climbs out of the tank at night. Not only is that an animatronic, but it's a learning experience. Because, yes, octopi have been known to climb out of their tanks. Just don't let him swallow it or people will think you're ripping off that alien movie with the uh, starfish thing. Okay, next up, under construction. I think the VR, I think the VR idea is workable. Maya goes into the VR machine and gets a headache that lingers even after she leaves. She thinks everything's okay, but over the next few days, she starts seeing strange glitches in reality. People's faces are blurring together in grotesque ways. She sees animatronics wandering around. Maybe a familiar rabbit? She thinks it followed her from the Pizzaplex and is trying to investigate, but it's getting closer. There's a fight, and it uh, gets her its claws into her skull, and it feels like it's tearing her head off, which is still hurting, when there's a sudden pop. She is pulled out of the VR headset. She's actually been stuck in it for a couple of hours, and emergency services are in the process of getting her out. She's hysterical, saying what she saw, but everyone assures her that the headset has been off since they started to take her out, 
and that she's just been babbling the whole time. They think she must have been, like, hysterical from the panic. Maya isn't sure, and now, as she's taken away, she wonders if she really escaped the VR set, or if this is just the next simulation. Okay, what's next? Um, Puppet Carver. Okay, the machine makes little wooden animatronics, but they aren't good for anything. Porter, the guy who made the machine, can't get them to work. Jack, the jerkish owner of the pizzeria, gets more impatient, and maybe one night he tries to fix the machine himself when a dog gets stuck, and he tries to reach in and get it and gets dragged inside. Porter comes in to find a line of bloody wooden animatronics and starts to call for help when he notices that these animatronics are moving on their own, and they are coming up to him. They look to him for guidance. Porter realizes that this is what they needed. They needed some sort of, a uh, sacrifice or life put into them to make them almost like real sentient creatures. He ends the call before it can go through, and decides that he never did like Jack anyways. I know that one's kind of standard by the books, but I... <laughs> It's kind of just like an easy suggestion. The hardest is he told me everything, because I can't think of a good way to change the stories, because there's like not much else that the other stories haven't done. There's a lot of focus on classes in high school and science classes and robotics classes. So changing it to just them working on an animatronic would have... A, been a lot like two other stories but you know you could have done so much because like look at all the animatronics he told me everything could it have been like about an animatronic whispering into the ear of a child could it have been like a proper play on the telltale heart perhaps a short about someone having an uncomfortable run-in with a strange man with a tight smile and off-colored skin he breaks down outside and has to stop by a nearby house or he's visiting the protagonist's parents. He tells creepy stories about Freddy and the gang being hurt in various ways. The narrator realizes that the stories were actually about him now that he has done research in the future and realizes that the man was a serial killer and that those stories he told were likely paraphrases of his crimes against children. He realizes, in horror, that he told him everything. Um... That's actually kind of based off of a story that my friend is writing, and I think that's a really good angle if you wanted to show another side of William Afton without having to go into the long-term rabbit thing, you know? And again, all these are pretty basic, but what I'm trying to show is that it wouldn't have taken much to do this. A lot of the Fazbear Fright stories have the same problems. They focus too much on the people and not enough on the concept. See, I get setting up for a story, but the problem is most of the times, the setup does not equate to the finale. Like, like the one with the goo monster breaking into the pizzeria at the end. Where was that set up? There was no setup. Him being a jerk, so he gets body snatched? Yeah, you already did that in Lonely Freddy, so there's not really a reason for you to do that again. I never know how to end these videos. Music